We all know that cold therapy can help you avoid getting sick. But what if you're already sick? Should you cold plunge? This has been a common question lately. Let's get into it. As always, guys, I would like to thank my research team for putting in the hard work, and we will link to the studies referenced in this video in the description below. If you're enjoying the Wellness Wednesdays series, please do hit that like, subscribe, and share with other cold therapy lovers and enthusiasts so we can help grow the channel. If you just search, I do cold water immersion when I'm sick, you're going to get a lot of different points of views and a lot of points of views that don't really address the conversation at all. One such article came from WebMD. So it was in an article about the eight ways to treat the cold and flu naturally. And one of the ways that it said was to apply hot or cold packs around your congested sinuses. Now, what this means is a hot shower or a cold shower or a cold plunge could potentially help with the aches, pains, and swelling of congested sinuses or just if it's the flu, body aches in general, but didn't necessarily address cold therapy itself. The second thing we looked at was a Harvard Business Review. This was an interview conducted. I do not know exactly how to pronounce this doctor's name. It is spelled B-U-I-J-Z-E. So my best guess is it is Dr. Boyish, but I could be wrong. Uh, he basically, he and his colleagues were looking at do cold showers lead to fewer sick days. Again, this study did not directly address whether or not you should do cold therapy while you are sick, but it did go into greater detail about why cold showers and cold water immersion can lead to fewer sick days and just to a, a boost in immunity altogether. One interesting point in this study was that they did find when they injected healthy adults with pathogens, those who practiced cold exposure and particularly Wim Hof's breathing techniques were able to combat it a lot faster. The third study came from Modern Reform, which did actually directly ad address whether or not you should cold plunge when you are sick. Their findings were not really, but also weren't entirely scientific. Um, I did not find any citations from where they are pulling their data or anything like that. I'm not familiar with this company. It appears that they specialize in saunas, cold plunging, fitness equipment, etc. One thing that they did say about cold plunging when sick is that when you're under the weather, it can be very draining on your energy. And of course, cold plunging can offer you a quick pick-me-up. It enhances circulation and releases endorphins, which could potentially help you feel better. And enhancing the circulation could help you flush out toxins a lot faster. Cons to consider, especially if you're running a fever, are that sudden temperature drops can be a shock to the system. And because the body's already working overtime to fight off the illness, additional stress may not be advisable. Now, this seems to be the current thread that we keep finding is that if you're already sick, your body is taxed. You don't need to be putting it into a higher state of taxation. However, because there are different ways and various temperatures to practice cold therapy, that doesn't necessarily mean that just because you don't want to do a 32 degree plunge because it'll tax your body significantly, doesn't mean that you shouldn't do a 50 degree plunge uh, just to at least help with the aches and pains. So basically what we're finding is what we're finding with a lot of these studies, which is there need to be a lot more studies and a lot more studies directly on these topics. Uh, the advice that I was always given that I always followed was as long as you don't have a stomach issue, uh, plunging is fine. Now I don't particularly get sick. I had West Nile when I was a teenager and so my immune system is pretty good. However, I do have friends that when they are feeling under, under the weather, they do still go ahead and plunge. And it does seem like they get better faster. So as with anything, when it comes to cold therapy, I think it's a lot of relying on your body and what's best for you and making that decision on your own. Again, though, if you do have a really, really high fever, maybe do a higher temp uh, cold plunge just so that, again, you're not totally shocking your body. And of course, guys, this is brought to you by Ice Wellness. Ice Wellness is a program specifically designed to help you find the ideal time and temperature and duration for you to plunge based off of your goals with cold therapy. We don't all practice cold therapy the same way, and it's ridiculous to think that one temperature or one duration is what's best for all of us. The ICE Wellness Program brings you a way to track your data, uh, simple meditations, and post-plunge workouts to do. Get your mind and your body in shape. And of course, our monthly newsletters help bring you real science versus bro science, same as our Wellness Wednesday video series. You do get access to a couple other exclusive member perks if you are on the subscription plan, including a Facebook group that's 
strictly people who are in the challenges so that you can maybe find people to do the challenge with, or at least compare stories of your growth with the program. So that is it, guys. Unfortunately, like I said, there was not a lot of data around what we were looking for on this one. We might be able to come back to it if we discover some other studies that do directly address what we are interested in. Uh, but for now, just doesn't seem like this science is there.